Daraprim, Isopril, Nitropress, and even an EpiPen. These are just a few names of prescription drugs that have skyrocketed in price recently. While the public is outraged over patients having to pay increasing cost of medication that some are needed to live, most of the public is not aware of the changes, whether they aren't affected or just uninformed. Today, we'll be looking at both sides of the coin to discover who is right, the public or the pharmaceutical industry. We'll answer a few questions along the way on the path to answer. Do rising drug prices harm those who need them? In August of 2015, Turning Pharmaceuticals raised the price of Daraprim, a drug which helped those fight AIDS from $13.50 a pill to $7.50 a pill. When news of this drastic increase hit the public, social media memes and reactions flooded the internet, and occasionally the news outlining the outrage and disbelief people felt about the change. Advocacy groups have even gone as far as to say Turning's actions with Daraprim have put an unjustifiable burden on patients and created unsustainable costs for the healthcare system. The price increase has had a chilling effect on the small patient population affected. A letter from the Infectious Diseases Society of America and the HIV Medicine Association wrote that hospitals and pharmacies are no longer able to stock up on the medication due to its increasing cost. They also calculate that year-long treatment will now cost 336 grand for those who weigh less than 132 pounds and 634.5 grand for those who weigh more than that. Dr. Carlos Del Rio, an infectious disease expert and professor at Emory School of Medicine and Rollins School of Public Health has said, even though you may not think this impacts you, it really does. At the end of the day, whether we like it or not, we're paying for it with our taxes or our policies are going up. In 2004, a pack of two EpiPens, which are life-saving products that are used to halt severe allergic reactions, cost only $100. Now the same two pens cost an upwards of $600, which is a 450% price increase for the same injector to deliver the same $1 dose of epinephrine it did 12 years ago. In 2007, after Mylon acquired the drug, Heather Bresch, who is now the CEO, took the brilliant step of marketing them to the parents of children with the allergies. Through a combination of school partnerships and aggressive advertising, Milan increased happy pen use by 67% in years since. That's good news for patients and parents, as more schools, camps, and theme parks carry them on site. It is also, of course, very good news for Milan. EpiPen revenues went up from 200 million to over 1 billion in that same period. Now, while generics can be a great alternative, they aren't always an option for more expensive name brand drugs. And in the aforementioned case of the EpiPen, the name brand option is the only option. <laughs> Many people are covered by health plans with large deductibles that require them to pay the full price of their drugs until they hit their limit, which can be thousands of dollars per year. And more plans are requiring patients who need expensive specialty drugs to contribute a percentage of the list price. Drug companies often help cover patients out-of-pocket costs through assistance programs, but not always. So patients who are the sickest and require the most expensive drugs are the most vulnerable to soaring drug prices. It's sort of embedded in the healthcare system that the price is never the price, unless you're a cash-paying customer, says Mr. Fine. And in that case, we soak the poor. You may be asking yourself what can be done. Imposing a price cap on epinephrine auto-injectors would only discourage future competitors. Instead, we should make it cheaper and easier to bring alternatives to the market. But instead of pointing fingers and blaming others, we need to push for reforms that allow new competitors to enter the market more quickly. When barriers to entry are high, competition delayed is often competition derailed. And as a result, drug prices may skyrocket as we repeat this cycle of panic and grief until the end of time.